Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm actually in the decorators warehouse here in Texas. We came here when we were at the Pinners conference and it is so fun. I thought it was fitting to do this as a background for this video that's going to kick off the Christmas DIYs. I know you guys are ready for it. You've been asking for it and it's going to be so much fun. So let's get into it because you know Christmas is going to be here before we know it. Today's video is jam-packed with a ton of Christmas inspiration ideas. Now, while there are some Dollar Tree DIYs in here, there are also items from other stores, both online and in person, that you can hopefully find near you. I've got a ton of different options so that these are easy to recreate for you to put in your home this season. Let's get started. For this first project, you're gonna need some bells. These are from Dollar Tree, but you can find them anywhere this time of year. And you're gonna start by spray painting them white. Then once they're fully dry, I brought them in. I added some fun ribbon to the top as well as jute twine, and then used a paint marker to create a fun little face with dots and just little noses with some paint. How cute are these fun little snowmen? I put them in this mug, but really you could use them for embellishments. They would also make really cute present toppers. I've really wanted to dupe these West Elm vases, so I picked up two different sizes of glass vases and got to work. I sprayed the inside of the vases with a metallic gold spray paint and then flipped them upside down to dry. Then I filled a spray bottle with about three quarters water to a quarter white vinegar and then grabbed some mirrored glass spray paint. I tried a few different techniques, but the one that I liked the best was when I sprayed the mirror glass spray paint onto the vase and then I spritz it with the water vinegar mixture from a distance that created some little water droplets on the surface. For the first two coats, I used a paper towel to pop the water bubbles. And then on the third and final coat, I just let it dry completely with the water on the surface and that gave it a great look. I let it completely dry overnight and I added these LED candles from Amazon, but you could also add a real one and bam, West Elm dupe for under five bucks. The glow just feels like Christmas to me. This next one starts with a free supply, which is a cardboard box. And these are so easy to find this year, especially with all the holiday ordering. Starting by getting a smaller piece of my box cut off that I can work with. I'm starting by sketching a variety of different sizes of houses so I can cut them out. And I'm just using regular scissors. You just wanna make sure that they're sharp. I did a variety of different sizes, but you can do all the same if you'd rather do that. And then I'm using my favorite paint marker from Amazon. I will link it down below. The ones you see me use today are those and I love them. And then I just pulled up some images on Pinterest to draw a variety of different houses. Then I decided to use this Hobby Lobby garland and I liked the unfinished wood color, but if you have beads on hand, if you wanna do pom-poms, if you wanna do tassels, you can do whatever you're feeling here. You can add some color as well. I used my dowel needle to string up two beads in between each house and I did a variety of sizes along the way. Now, if you drew your houses in the right direction with your corrugated cardboard, you should be able to slide it right through. I wasn't paying attention when I cut them, so I had to kind of power it through, but it ended up working with my dowel needle, which I will link down below. It's a must have for garlands for me. One of my new favorite places to shop for DIY supplies for Christmas projects is the thrift store. Let me show you how you can turn these green candles into something that you can leave up all winter long. I found these green candles and I put them in a bowl with hot water. I let them soak submerged for about two minutes to soften them up. And then I took a knife carefully and started to mold the candle into a tree shape. I did one pass around and then for the next layer, I added it in between the top two so that it created a cascading look. These fit great in these Dollar Tree candlesticks I already had and I love them. These turned out way better than I even expected. Last year I did a variation on this metal nativity scene silhouette, but this year I found a much closer dupe that's more substantial. I grabbed this nativity set half off at Hobby Lobby and I got all my pieces out and laid them out to figure out how I wanted them to sit. I sanded them down and once everything was where it needed to be, I grabbed a scrap piece of my one by two laid out all my pieces and figured out how long I wanted my base to be. I marked it and went outside and cut it with my saw, but you could use a miter box. And if you don't want to do this thick of wood, you could also easily do this on paint stir sticks as well. I sanded my wood and then gave it a quick stain with Early American by Minwax. And then I took all of my pieces and spray painted it with flat black spray paint. Now you could stain these wood pieces and that would look gorgeous too, but I like the black silhouette look, so to each their own. 
When my pieces were dry, I laid them out on my stained piece of wood and used some super glue gel to adhere everything in place. I let it dry overnight and this thing was ready to go. And I really love that I was able to make this dupe for less than 10 bucks. I have a feeling this will be around for years to come. It will look beautiful on a mantle or on a shelf and it looks really great with that greenery in the background. I am always picking up picture frames from the thrift store, especially for the holidays. I like to go with metallic options and it's great for not only printable art like I'm showing here, but vintage sheet music, holiday prints, or any other heirloom things you have for the holidays. Now I have got a pack of a ton of free printables over on my blog for you for Christmas. So you can either scan this QR code on the screen or you can head down to the description to get yours I've got a wide variety, both religious and not, colorful and neutral. So you will find something that you like over there. So be sure to check it out. It's all free for my Whiskey Craft Buddy email subscribers and it's really easy to join. Also included in the printables are some from my absolute favorite Christmas movie, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And this will be the fifth year that I have made DIYs inspired by the movie. These are all ones I've made in the past and I will link my full playlist down below if you are a fan of the movie like I am. And I'm also planning on doing a Christmas movie video again this year. We're gonna do Christmas Vacation, we're gonna do Elf, we're definitely gonna do The Grinch and then I need your help figuring out what other movies we should cover. So head down to the description and let me know your favorite Christmas movie because I want to make projects that you guys want to see. So I'm going to tally it up and pick some of the top ones to create some more DIYs. Now speaking of the Grinch, let me show you how I made these awesome glitter DIY ornaments from Dollar Tree Supplies, super quick and easy and so fun. To make these ornaments, I went with some of these flat Dollar Tree ones. You can also grab glass ones from stores as well. You just need an ornament and you're also going to want some glitter. I like this extra fine from Walmart and this is the only time of year I ever buy glitter, only time. You're also gonna grab some of this Mop and Glow. I like it better than polycrylic, but you can also use polycrylic. The Mop and Glow is just cheaper and easier to put into your ornaments. So you're gonna grab your ornaments and a couple disposable cups and a funnel. You're gonna add some of this Mop and Glow to your ornament and swish it all around. Then I like to dump it back in because I only use the Mop and Glow for these ornaments. And then you're going to add the glitter after you get the excess out. You want a funnel for your mop and glow and a funnel for your glitter because it's going to get gross if not. Then I like to take just a little bit of paper towel, Kleenex, toilet paper, whatever you have on hand, put it on the top with your fingers and shake it around. What it's going to do is stick right to that mop and glow and then you're going to be able to let it dry and it's going to harden on the inside of your ornament. So you're not going to have the glitter shed that I absolutely hate. You are going to just have these beautiful ornaments that glitter in your Christmas lights. Now you can add whatever you want to it as far as stickers or decals or you could even do a little kid's handprint on it. I have to say one of my top favorite items at Dollar Tree to make over with my Cricut are arrows. I love these wood ones, but my favorite are these wedding signs. They seem to be going away, but I'm hoping that they come back. A lot of you asked, how do you get the words covered up? You can prime them with chalk paint and then paint them the color of your choice. For these wood ones, you can stain them. They take stain really well, but I decided to paint one green and one red. Once the paint dried, I needed to measure. So these larger ones are about 10 inches by three inches. I thought a Christmas movie theme would be fun, so I did Home Alone, I also did Elf, and of course Christmas Vacation. It's as easy as cutting and weeding the free files that I'll provide over on my blog. Just check the link down in the description. For the Elf and Home Alone ones, I put those on the larger arrows and those were really easy to apply as well. This is my favorite transfer tape of all time from Expressions Vinyl. It is enough to pick up your vinyl, but it's not gonna rip up all the paint you work so hard to put down. Again, all three of these are free files over on my blog and most everything I am sharing today will be free so you can recreate them yourself.
Now, if you love super inexpensive Cricut DIYs, you're definitely gonna wanna check out my Cricut DIY playlist for Christmas. I have so many projects made from Dollar Tree items that you're definitely gonna wanna check out. And I was recently talking to Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap, and she says that she shares her projects and calls them from the vault projects from years past. And I love that. So if you wanna check out From the Vault projects, I will be sharing more of them throughout this video. You can find the links to those in the description, or you can just check out my Christmas playlist, which I will link up in the iCards for you. For Christmas decor, I'm a huge fan of all things baking, so I wanted a prop that looked like a milk bottle like Milk for Santa. I grabbed one of these Starbucks Frappuccino bottles and I added some milk after I poured it out, drank the coffee while I crafted, and then cleaned it out. You're gonna wanna swish the paint around. You can mix it with a little bit of water to thin it out. And then once you're done, let it strain out and wipe the top before it dries to give that line of a almost full bottle of milk. You can put it on your Santa tray and it also looks great on a tiered tray. Keeping on with that cooking and baking theme, these houses from Dollar Tree are the perfect size to make into little gingerbread houses. Now you can make anything with this technique look like a gingerbread house, paint it with a base coat of nutmeg brown paint, that's the key, and then get some of this puffy paint to add on the icing. It puffs up, but it dries completely hard, so then that way it looks like 3D icing. Now, like I said, you can make anything look like gingerbread houses. So last year I did these Hobby Lobby houses. Again, that nutmeg brown is the secret here. Paint the entire thing, let it dry. And then to add a little bit of texture, I mixed some white paint with some baking soda and applied it to the eaves of the house. That allowed it to look like it was freshly fallen snow. And then I finished it off adding some details with both that puffy paint, as well as some of these little glitter balls I got in a mystery box challenge. They would not have been my first choice, but they added some fun whimsy and sparkle to these gingerbread houses. So anything that is remotely in a house shape, nutmeg brown and this puffy paint and you are good to go. Something else I fell in love with on the Pottery Barn site that was well out of budget were these modern nutcrackers. And Kirkland's had some, but they were still over $25 for one of them, made it really hard to justify the price. So, I decided to get some unfinished ones and make them over myself. These are at Michael's. A lot of stores have them, but I ended up going with the Hobby Lobby option because their stuff is already half off, and these were $9.99, making them $5 each. When I got them home, I removed the tags, and then I used a little sanding block to remove any of the rough edges. A lot of these project pieces aren't sanded the best. And then I decided to use this English chestnut stain to stain them. I used a foam brush and I had to flood a lot of the areas with some excess stain and then use a paper towel to rub it off. That's how I was able to get the Nutcracker fully covered. And once he was done, I just let him dry overnight and I didn't worry about sealant because it's stain and these turned out really good. Now, something to keep in mind with these project pieces is that they typically use wood glue to put them together. So sometimes you'll get some unevenness, which I got with these, but I'm not unhappy with it. I like the rustic look, but I did just want to throw that out there. I love how these turned out and for a fraction of the price, the look can be yours. For those monochrome ones, if you're looking for more of a color or if you are a vibrant person and want a pink one or an orange one you can spray paint them as well they turn out really well if you are loving all of these dupes I'm sharing in this video, you're definitely going to want to check out my DIY instead of buy playlist. I've got a ton of holiday options as well as some everyday things that you can check out and recreate for a fraction of the cost that you can get items bought at some of the high-end stores. So check that out in the iCards or down in the description. Now, if you're watching this video and thinking, Whitney, I thought you had a ton of Christmas wood projects. I do. And when I was putting together this video, I realized I had way too many to pick just a couple favorites to go in this video. So come back next week. I am going to be bringing you my best Christmas wood projects of all time. The thing is gonna be jam packed with inspiration, a ton of beginner friendly ideas. So be sure to come back for that and I will share a ton, ton, ton of Christmas wood projects. You can also head to the link in the description or scan this QR code with your phone's camera to sign up for my emails and I will notify you when I post that video. These large signs that Kirkland's has every season are awesome because they really make a statement. However, to make this with wood, it is really heavy and to buy them, it's expensive. So I decided to grab some one by twos at Home Depot and these are like under $3 a piece and you need one 
eight foot section per sign. Then also for each sign, you're gonna want a piece of a Dollar Tree foam board. I'm making two signs, so I grabbed two. Start by taking your one by two and measuring the long section of your sign, which should be approximately 30 inches. Cut two of them and then measure a piece that will fit evenly in between the two of them to frame out your sign. Once you've cut all four pieces, your frame should look like this. And then you're gonna need some artwork for the inside. I decided to print 20 by 30 posters and don't pay full price at Walgreens. They're always running a deal. So Google for a coupon code, but I got half off. So each of these were 13 bucks for the prints. Something else to keep in mind while you're ordering these prints is that you're going to want approximately a two inch bleed around the outside with no artwork on it because you are going to put your frame on and you don't want to cover any words. So if you're designing in Canva like I like to, you can pull these little guides over and make sure you have a two inch border around the outside. Then that way you won't have your wood go over your letters. So I'm just laying down the border here and this is why we want to have our two inch bleed. So then that way everything is clear of the outside. And then we're gonna mount this poster onto the foam board with some double stick tape. I make sure that the corners are covered and there's a decent amount in the center because then that way you won't have any gapping. I like to do the top first so I know it's gonna stay put and then peel the poster back and stick the other pieces down lower. Once that's done, you can line up your wood pieces again and then staple them to the sign on the back. Now I like to get one piece set and then continue around the outside so that you know everything is in the right spot just because you have to flip it over to staple it with your staple gun. You can get a cheap one like this at Walmart or any craft store. You don't need a fancy DeWalt one. That's just what we have. Once it's all hooked on, your sign is ready to go. And if you have any ends that you need to trim, like any overhang, just take an X-Acto knife and cut down that foam board, being careful not to cut your wood. I love how large these are. This sign is going to be awesome for my dining room this Christmas with all my gingerbread stuff. And I love, love, love this setup. You can also go more neutral with this How the Grinch Stole Christmas print. I got that one from the Navage Patch. So I will be sure to link that down below so you can download that for free. They've got a ton of different pages and you could also do this with family pictures. You could print a picture poster. So tons of different options. Using that same technique, I wanted to dupe this Tis the Season To Be Jolly sign from Kirkland's and I decided to measure the width of the sign as well as the height so I could create a square instead of a rectangle. I used an X-Acto knife to cut it down, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then I did the same process to create the outside framing. You can make these signs as big or as small as you want. I decided to do a small one as well, and you want to give everything a good sand before you go to stain it. Once you have the technique down, you can make the signs as big or as small as you want. So I also did, in addition to the square, the small rectangle. I made sure to sand everything down before I stained the outside. You can paint them as well. And then I painted the back of both signs, the color red, and then the smaller one is green. And then at this point, I just cut out a large decal and added it to the sign. I have the full tutorial over on this video. If you want it slowed down with your Cricut, so you can check that out. And then the green one is also a free cut file. Both of these will be available for you over on my blog. One of my top number one most requested favorite DIYs ever are these faux marshmallows. And I make them with white model magic that you can sometimes find at Dollar Tree, but you can also find it really easily on Amazon or at Walmart, really anywhere has it. All you need to do is take this modeling clay made for kiddos and put it in your hands, roll it around and create a marshmallow shape. That's it. That's how you create faux marshmallows. It's so quick and easy. I make them every year and they're so cute in decor. You can leave them as they are, or once they dry overnight, you can take a paint marker, add some fun little snowman features, and you've got adorable little snowman marshmallows. I took mine and added them to this jar from Dollar Tree to display, and it's also great because they stay really safe in there when you want to store them throughout the year. There's a ton of different options for displaying them, quick, easy, and oh so cute. Here's another idea to take those marshmallows to the next level with a little bit of fake chocolate drizzle. What you're going to do is before you sit your marshmallow to the side to dry, stick a dowel rod into the bottom and then let it fully dry. Once it's dry, then go through with this tulip paint, same thing we used for the gingerbread houses, but in brown so it looks like chocolate. I like to make a decent circle covering the top and then you can tap the stick onto your desk. 
the more you tap it, the more kind of cascade drizzle you're going to get. But then let those dry overnight. They're going to dry hard. They won't be wet like paint and they are so stinking cute. Another option for marshmallows is using felt. And I created these cute little marshmallows with a unlikely supply. That is toilet paper rolls. I've been collecting these because I had a thought that maybe I would need them for Christmas DIYs and I was right. So I cut it in half and then I'm cutting a strip of felt to wrap around the outside of my piece. You also want to make sure you have enough on either end because we're going to cut some tabs here in a second to fully hook it to the toilet paper roll. I just added glue with my precision glue gun all the way around the outside and then I cut some tabs around the outside so that I could add some glue and fold them in. That's going to give you a nice finished edge. Then to close off our marshmallow we're going to add some hot glue to the bottom and press it directly down on some scrap felt, let it cool and then trim it. It makes it a lot easier than having to trace and cut it correctly to then get it to stick so just add the glue, put it down and then trim it. We're going to repeat the same step but on the top so that we have a full closed marshmallow and then you can be done if you want just some regular marshmallows these are nice to throw into vignettes they look nice and fluffy they're kind of a little bit oversized which i like it goes with the whimsy vibe of this setup and i think they are super adorable quick and easy to do this could also be a really fun diy with kiddos i think i might make some more of these so finn and i can have a marshmallow snowball fight when it gets too cold to go outside here in illinois now another take on those is to create little snowman marshmallows. So I took a paint marker and added a face as well as a little strip of orange felt for a nose. I hot glued that on and then I went back in with that tulip paint to add some faux chocolate on the top. I'm gonna add it around, kind of get the drips where I want them started and then tap it on the table. So then that way it gives me some really fun drips. These would make a great addition to any tiered tray or throw them in a little like ramekin dish for some fun addition to your hot cocoa bar. Now, as I was making those, I realized they kind of looked like mugs, but without the handle. So I decided to do the same thing, but with some colored felt and then add handles. So here I'm doing the same thing I did before with the marshmallows, just pushing the tabs in. I took one of these styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree and glued it on the inside. Now I had some leftover really fluffy yarn from these Pottery Barn dupe pillows, but I used some scrap of that yarn to wrap it around the top and give it some faux whipped cream. I think this works a lot easier for ornaments than the spackling. It obviously doesn't look like real whipped cream like the spackling does, but I like the fluffy whimsy of this, so I thought I would try it this year versus the spackling that I did last year. Then to make your handle, just grab some scrap felt, roll up a strip like this, glue it so it stays, trim it and then I'm finding the seam on my cup and gluing the handle down. I had to hold it for probably 20 seconds for each piece but once it did it stayed perfectly and these were so cute. My last step was to add an embellishment so I painted these little snowflakes from Dollar Tree white and added them to the center of my little mug and these were good to go. I made a bunch of these so that I could put them on the tree in my dining room for my hot cocoa slash gingerbread room and I am so excited. You can add a hanger to the back but I just set them on the branch and it worked out perfectly. Couple other ideas for the coffee mugs. I made this latte just by dusting the top of the white felt with some nutmeg brown. I also added some brown felt and some melted chocolate to these and then used some more of that model magic to make some teeny little marshmallows. And then once they dried overnight, hot glued them to the top and they just are so cute. So they're great for shelf sitters, great for tiered trays. You could do whatever colors you're feeling. And I also decided to do some green with snowflakes as well as some off-white so then that way I could keep these out for winter decor rather than just Christmas. You guys loved my Halloween Pottery Barn inspired pillows so we're gonna try it again with this candy cane pillow. We're not gonna pay over $60 we're gonna make it ourselves. I grabbed some of this chenille yarn at Hobby Lobby in red and white and then we are going to make just a simple pillow base that we can wrap in the yarn. So I'm taking a leftover drop cloth that I'm not using right now and decided to use that as a fabric. You can use whatever fabric you have on hand. You can even use an old pillowcase. You just need some fabric. We're not going to see it. I traced and cut out a shape of a candy cane and then I'm using my glue all around the outside except for the bottom opening so that I can stuff it. I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue glue sticks because I like the way that they hold and they are meant for fabric, wood, all the things. Then we're gonna take our fingers inside of our candy cane and flip it inside out. 
Just take your time and you can use your fingers to really push that curve back around. That's gonna give you a nice seam. Then I'm taking some stuffing from an old pillow and filling it out just to make sure it's nice and fluffy and plush. Then we're gonna seal off the bottom with some hot glue to make sure that all that stuffing is gonna stay in there. Then it's time to take our candy cane shape to the next level. I decided to start with red, but you could do whatever you're feeling. I took a piece, left a little bit of slack so that I could wrap it around the bottom and kind of glued it to the bottom of my pillow. Then with the hot glue, I'm going to continue to wrap and cover the bottom so that canvas drop cloth is not being seen underneath. Then I'm using my detailed glue gun, just gluing around and wrapping five layers. Then I switched to white, did five layers, cut the white, red, this is a great thing to do while you are binging shows. I think this night I was working on it and I was catching up on Bachelor in Paradise, so it's a great mindless task. Once you make your way around, you are done. And I ended up making two pillows. I had plenty left to make even two more pillows, so you don't even need the whole thing of yarn, which is great. You can use it for another project. I think I did pretty good duping this pillow, especially when you compare it to the Pottery Barn one. There's no comparison in price, but even with the Kirklands, I was able to make two. It would have been back up to $50 if I bought two of the Kirklands ones to balance out a couch. So last year, Anthropology had a really fun gingerbread doormat, and I wanted to make one like it, but I didn't get around to it. Well, this year, Grandin Road has one that is over 70 bucks, and I decided to dupe it with a Walmart doormat but you could get these anywhere you just want a plain version of these doormats i started by measuring the long side and realized it was 30 inches wide so i measured 15 inches in the center for the point of my house and then i also marked 10 inches and 20 inches so i knew which third each house would fit into then following the picture almost to a t i used some craft sticks because i couldn't find my ruler but you can use a ruler and created the peak of the center one and then the different tops of the houses as well as the chimneys. So I'm just looking at the picture and trying to recreate the best I can. Once I had everything roughed out the way I wanted, I took my tin snips and cut it. It was just a lot easier to cut it that way. Shake off all of your extra pieces from cutting your doormat apart. And then I took some tape just to really help make my outside lines straight, clean, crisp. So I'm just using a regular paintbrush and acrylic paint to start to apply it around the outside. I did the bottom and both sides as well as the peak of the middle house just so I could get them to be very symmetrical. Then it was time to rough out everything else so I used more white paint and got everything where it needed to be. I just followed the picture again, it's kind of a paint by numbers. And then I realized that it really made it pop with a second coat of the white paint. So here it is after the first coat and then if you look the one on the right has the second coat, so it's just more vibrant. So I decided to do the whole thing just over one more time. Once it was dry, I wanted to seal it, so I took it outside and it looks like the seasons are confused here with my leaves, but I just used some clear spray paint and gave it a really good coat all around. So then that way that paint was going to be locked in in case it got wet. I don't recommend like putting a ton of snow on it. It's definitely decorative, but I want to make sure the whole thing didn't fall apart. On top of the fact that this looks great, I was able to make it for under $10, which is so much cheaper than that other one. And I think they look very similar. Do you have a friend that would love some fun earrings like these? Well, here's how to make them really easy. Grab some fish hook earring pieces from any jewelry department at a craft store. And then you're either gonna want some fun ornaments if you wanna go the holiday route, or you can find some embellishments like this in the jewelry section at the craft store as well. It's as simple as taking some needle nose pliers, opening up the earring hook, putting the ornament or whatever embellishment on it, and then closing it up. You can make a ton of different variations of these. These would be super cute to gift to teachers. You could gift them to your friends. This would also be great in a secret Santa white elephant. What's really great is you can really personalize these based on the person's interests. For my gingerbread setup, I wanted one of these fun candy cane LED candles, but this price was crazy. So you can make this with an LED pillar candle from Dollar Tree, super easy peasy, but I decided to do a thicker one from Hobby Lobby just because I wanted a bigger size than what Dollar Tree could offer, but you could get LED candles anywhere, even the thrift store. I started with a thick painter's tape and did one piece on a diagonal and then used another piece as a spacer. And I'm just continuing that all around my candle until everything is covered. 
Then we're going to cover it in Mod Podge to prepare it for our glitter. And I know you guys are thinking, Whitney, you hate glitter. Don't worry. I like this fine glitter just for Christmas and we're going to seal it so it doesn't come off everywhere. I'm dumping this on top of some paper, but you could use a tin or a pan just to catch everything. And I'm also making sure that the glitter goes up on the edge of my candle so that it looks like a full little strip. In between dumps, I'm pouring it back into the container and that's why it's helpful to have the paper on the bottom. And I'm gonna to continue to add Mod Podge around the outside. Once everything's covered, we're going to cover the glitter with Mod Podge, let it dry about halfway, and then we're gonna add a little bit more glitter. I did two coats to make sure everything was coated. And then once you do that additional layer of glitter, we're gonna go back through and cover everything with more Mod Podge. Here's what it's gonna look like when it's covered with Mod Podge, but don't worry, it will dry like this. And then it's time to pull off that tape. So carefully pull it off, especially because if the Mod Podge dried on top of the tape as well as on the candle, you don't want to Band-Aid rip it. You wanna go slowly, and once you get going, make sure to pull it at a sharp angle like I'm doing here and you will be fine. Now to get off any random pieces of glitter, I just used a wet paper towel. I did that on the inside of the candle as well. And then I also sprayed a polycrylic sealant on the outside just to make sure that glitter was not going anywhere. But I absolutely love this in the red and white vibe. It looks great on those little pedestals. And this is going to live in my dining room with my gingerbread setup this Christmas. Hey Craft Buddy, are you still with me? This Christmas extravaganza is jam-packed, but could you take a second, head down, give this video a thumbs up, and also leave me a comment with a Christmas emoji? That just lets me know that you stuck with me through these long videos, and it helps YouTube know that it's a fun video that other people should watch. Now, let's get into the next project, these Dollar Tree wood rounds that will spice up any wreath. I know I have gotten so many of you hooked on making these wood rounds from Dollar Tree just to hang over your wreaths because it is so much easier to store them in the off season. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by prepping our wood round. And if you can't find these at Dollar Tree, no worries. You can find these at any other craft store. They might be a little bit more expensive, but they will be thicker and higher quality. We're gonna remove the hanger and stain it with the stain or paint of your choice. I'm using Early American. Then I'm going to measure halfway up from the bottom of my wood round, put some painter's tape down, and then paint the bottom red. Actually, you can paint it whatever color you're feeling. I just wanted to do red. Let it go about halfway dry, peel off the painter's tape, and then we're gonna use paper transfer tape to apply this decal that is free over on my blog. I absolutely love this paper transfer tape and the Craft Buddies do too. So I have this QR code you can go ahead and scan to head right to Amazon to purchase if you're interested. The reason I really like this paper transfer tape is it's not going to mess up your painting or your wood at all. It's sticky enough to pick up that vinyl, but it's not too sticky that it's gonna rip up anything else. Now, this design is actually what started all of the leopard print inclusion files, and this one is actually a design space file. This is what started it all. This is the leopard inclusion of the seasonal items. I now have them for a ton of different holidays. This file is actually inside Cricut Design Space. I'm hoping to design a new one this year that's free for you guys, but if you have Cricut access, you can go ahead and grab this and make it in its size to your wood round. Then for the second option, after I apply that leopard print and black vinyl, then I'm applying Merry Christmas, You Filthy Animal because I thought it was perfect with the animal print from Home Alone. I'm adding it to the side. Then for the ones that are going on my front door, I decided to give it a quick coating of Mod Podge. This is going to make it so if your door gets any sun, your vinyl is not going to bubble and pop up. And then I finished off the Marion Bright one with a bow, but the bow is definitely optional. And then I added a traditional bow to the Merry Christmas, You Filthy Animal. I love how these turned out. They are so cute, quick and easy. And I have so many of these now, but it's so easy to store these versus having a bunch of seasonal wreaths. Speaking of not guessing it's Dollar Tree, this next one is also one of my favorites in this video. I grabbed one of these wood panels and typically I don't tell you to buy wood from Dollar Tree, but I thought this could be a fun little $1.25 project. I quickly sanded it down just with a hand sander and then I stained the entire thing early American. Then I measured to get about five inches tall by 10 inches wide to create my stencil. Now, because I'm gonna stencil, I just used some scrap vinyl that I had laying around instead of needing a certain color. And then instead of weeding the outside like we have been on most projects, we're gonna weed out the inside so that we can use it as a stencil. 
here's what that should look like. And then I took my paper transfer tape, tried to apply it, and it was a sad sauce moment because it wouldn't stick at all. So to fix that, I just went through with a quick coat of light Mod Podge, let it dry, and then applied it. That gave my stencil something to stick to. So once I did that, I was in a much better position to then stick it down, apply Mod Podge to seal down my stencil, and then use a disposable makeup sponge to do the different colors. Now I get a lot of questions on why would you do vinyl versus when do you do the painting, and honestly, I just usually have more paint on hand than I do colors of vinyl. I always have white and black, maybe a little red, but I always have a lot of colors of paint. So once I got that all done, I peeled off the stencil and removed the little pieces while it was still a little wet. And then to finish it off, it's as easy as adding some hot glue to some clothespins, gluing them around the outside so the clip faces outward, and adding a little kickstand, and you've got a cute little piece of decor. And once the Christmas cards start coming in, you can clip them onto the back, and you have a fun little festive display. Also PSA, all these are Dollar Tree Christmas cards. How cute. The next time you're in Dollar Tree, be sure to pick up some of this fun ribbon and let me show you how to make it over. I really like these three inch ribbons because you have a lot of area to work with, but you could even do this on the thinner ribbons. Grab some heat transfer vinyl. I'm using white and I ended up cutting out some different sayings that were two inches tall. Then I'm gonna take this buffalo check ribbon and I'm going to apply Merry Christmas. This is just in a fun font I found in Design Space and I'm using my Cricut Easy Press Mini to press it down. I have it on the lowest setting and I'm using a Teflon sheet just to protect the ribbon but it went on super great. And I like to take these ribbons and put them in my tree. So I can put whatever saying that I want and kind of spice up my tree with that ribbon or you can even put it into a garland. I love here how this little message is peeking out, and obviously these would be great to wrap around gifts, but for Christmas, I think it's so fun to incorporate this into your decor. You could put your last name, a variety of different things. The super cute snowman is really easy to make with a Dollar Tree pizza pan. Now, if you can't find these at Dollar Tree, you can use a pizza pan or a wood round. You're gonna wanna make sure that anything you're using as a base has a base color of white, so you can spray paint the pizza pan or you can paint with chalk paint depending on what base you're using. Then it's time to add our face. So I started by using some red paint and buffing it in with my finger, so then that way it looked like a rosy cheek of a snowman. Once I had both of those done, I went in with a paint marker to do the eyes, as well as a couple dots for the mouth, and then we are going to add our nose for our cute little snowman. I added a couple dabs of glue on the back so I could hang it up. And then I also made sure to give my frosty friend a little scarf with some ribbon. Bada bing, bada boom, good to go. And this is also a wonderful project that you can do with kids. One of my most favorite places to buy Christmas decor is actually secondhand via the thrift store. So here are some of my favorite finds and best tips. Before you even step foot in the thrift store, my number one tip is to make a list of the items you're looking for. I just pop it into my notes app. In the same vein, give yourself a budget. It's really easy to be a kid in a candy store, but you don't want to just add volume. Look for good quality pieces that you will actually use and only buy the things that you truly love. If not, you'll end up donating back in a few months anyway. In that same vein of cutting out the clutter, you wanna make sure that you're getting stuff out of your house before you add more in. So I like to do the one in one out rule. I like to pack up donations before I go shopping and get it out of my house. I like to donate local, but also with craft supplies, I like to ask our local schools, preschools, and also any nursing homes if they're in need of some activities before I just donate it to a place like Goodwill because I think it goes a little bit further that way and you can keep it in your community and help support others. And in that same vein, I like to shop local thrift stores when I can. The closest to me are Goodwill and Salvation Army, but I do like to take a little bit more time to go a little bit further out and shop those local ones when I can. One of my favorite hacks is to pick up scarves with great textures. You can add them to baskets with some greenery and then throw in a pillow for a fun addition to a shelf or a tabletop. Or if you want a more neutral look, you can add lights and some greenery picks and voila. I also like to drape the backs of chairs with scarves. These tassels make it look just like a blanket, but it's way cheaper and smaller to store in the off season. 
Now up next, let's talk about this hidden gem at the thrift store in their cookware section. It's bunt pans and cake pans. Now if you can find a cake pan in a holiday shape like this tree, it's as simple as cleaning it and styling it. But I also grabbed a variety of sizes and shapes of bunt pans to create some faux candies for my gingerbread setup. I started by spray painting some white and some red, and then I went in with acrylic paint for the details. This one already had a snowflake pattern, so I just painted over that and I added white polka dots to this other one. Now for the white ones, I did curved lines for a peppermint and then also some straight stripes along the grooves of the pan. Once they were all dry, I wrapped them in Dollar Tree cellophane and tied it off with baker's twine and ribbon. How stinking cute are these? You can also wrap a bump pan in fabric like I did here for a similar look if you don't wanna to have to do the paint. I tucked it into the center and used double stick tape to make sure it didn't move on me. And if those candies are a little too big for you, here's how to make some mini ones for a tiered tray setup. You can use hot glue and silicone molds like this that are usually made for baking or for candy making, and you can fill them with hot glue. Now be careful and let it fully cool. And once it does, you can pop it out of those silicone containers. So it's key that you have a silicone one, not metal, so then that way it doesn't just stick to it. I did a base coat of white, I did the two cellophane sides gray, and then I used a detailed brush to add the red to create this really fun little peppermint. You could hang them up and make them into ornaments, but I like them as embellishments on my tiered tray. And you're only limited by the shape of the mold that you can find. Another quick and easy and nice and cheap, but really cute are these appetizer plates. Now I did a similar project back in the fall for my fall Dollar Tree blanks. And I thought instead of putting those away and buying more plates, why don't I take the vinyl off and redo them every season? Vinyl's not that crazy expensive for that small of a piece. So I just cut out Mary in red and I just washed the plates off after I removed the vinyl and then replaced it. Then that way I don't have to find a place to store it and these can just stay out on my table with the different seasons on top. This is another free file that I'll have for you over on my blog and I love how the letters curve to fit perfectly in the center of that plate. So I have a confession, I think I'm addicted to throw pillows and you might be too, so here's a fun project. I preheated my heat press to 315 degrees for 30 seconds and I got these placemats recently at Dollar Tree. Now I wanted to try something that I saw on TikTok and you only need one placemat to make the pillow. So you start by cutting out your design and all three of these will be free over on my blog. Finn loves Baby Shark so I applied this decal to the front of it. I did a Merry Grinchmas and then I also did this Christmas movies in hot cocoa to represent all of my favorite Christmas movies. Then you can unpinch the front and the back layer of the placemat and put a little slit in the back. So depending on if you're using the green side or this tartan side. I made it just big enough for my hand and some stuffing to fit in and I stuffed the whole pillow. Then that way you don't have to worry about gluing anything together. And when each pillow was stuffed, I just took some baker's twine, some like yarn, whatever you have on hand with a needle. And I'm using a dowel needle really quick to stitch up the back just so then that way all the stuffing will stay inside. It will stay nice and soft and it's something that Finn can even lay on and it won't be uncomfortable. I absolutely love the Christmas movie and hot cocoa one and the Grinchmas is super fun too on the dark green. So while I already have an addiction to pillows, we'll add these three to the stash. That's gonna do it for this round of Christmas DIYs. Be sure to head down to the comments and let me know your favorite project. And if you wanna see all of Decorator's Warehouse, Shannon has been hard at work vlogging this entire trip. By the time you see this, her video will be live. So I will link that for you. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.